Financial strengths and weaknesses. Um, sometimes you've got to prepare yourself for things like, say, moving house or whatever, uh, which are going to have a lot of hidden costs involved. Because even though you budget, there's always something. You get there and the, the kitchen's all leaky or the, um, you need more repairs done or you've got decoration costs that you hadn't budgeted for. So there's always something in there um, that you're better off preparing for in advance, <clears throat> putting an extra budget aside for it. Um, in the same way, with working contract to contract, which is often the way I do, um, I always try and budget to keep my expenses around the same, regardless if I'm working or not. Because the idea being is you're accumulating wealth over time rather than going, it's a good month, I'm going to go out and buy myself a Rolex or something. You generally try and get to a year ahead. Um, so that if there's no work for the next year, it wouldn't really matter, uh, except it would just be eaten into your savings. The other side of that being is sometimes you can get partners or whatever that are financially a nightmare. Um, I've had it in the past where you've come home and they bought something. I mean, the most, most expensive one was a holiday to Florida. Um, no discussion or whatever. Put one half thousand pound deposit. You've come home and said, oh, we've got this to pay. And it's like, what the, what have you been doing? Um, <clears throat> so sometimes you've got to sit there and go, am I an idiot here? Am I going to carry on just bailing this person out that's terrible with cash? Or are you going to turn around and say, you know what? Is the relationship worth this? You know, because you're never going to get ahead with you when you're with somebody like that because they have no control over their finances and very likely will never have any control over their finances until they're completely bankrupt and the bank withdraw everything. Um, they don't see it. They they get like um, a high from buying stuff and they're, they're addicts. <laughs> they're addicts, shopping addicts. Um, and it's pretty common in the UK. It's why you see people on catalog shopping and things. I mean, if you look at catalogs, people go, oh, so 30 pence a week or whatever. They never work out how much they've just paid for something. Um, you know, like a pair of jeans just costs 120 pounds where you buy it in town for 30. They don't look at it that way and they don't accumulate that you're actually paying 100 pounds a month or whatever because of all these little 30, 50, one pound, you know, small coins that accumulate into this big debt. Um, you're better off just saving your money. And as I'm saying, some people can work with it. They understand it and will turn around and go, you know what, this stuff's a rip off. You can get this stuff cheaper in town. I'd rather save the money and just go down next Thursday after I get paid, because I've got 30 quid spare in my wages or whatever. Th those common sense things put people ahead. But at the same time, if they go, well, I want a pair of jeans, but you know, I'm not gonna pay the rent this week. They are exactly the same as the people that are moving their debt and increasing it by not paying it or acute adding more to it. Um, so my, my personal view on this is you should always be trying to keep debt free. It's why I don't join the gyms. The gyms want to lock you into an 18 month contract. And as I've said to many a gym, it says, but I'm not here for 18 months. I may be in say Worcester three, four months of the year. Why would I want an 18 month contract? I'm just paying you for no apparent reason. And I know that from a gym point of view, they know the first few months, they'll get an influx of people, especially after Christmas, where they have all the uh, New Year's resolutions of getting fitter, and then it tailors off again. But at the same time, that is not my problem. At the end of the day, I do go to the gym when I've got access to it. But at the same time, I'm not paying for the next two years for a gym I only want for three or four months there, because I'll use another one like over here in Spain, we've got a gym just behind us. So the, the point being is, Companies try to buy you into this stuff as well. And quite simply, just go, no. I'll pay on a monthly basis or when I turn up or whatever. Because if I'm not actually going to be using it to the full capacity or anywhere near what it's costing, 
there is no need to have it. Um, it's why a lot of companies like the credit cards. Credit cards is a guaranteed form of payment. But as I said in my last video, I just cut the thing in half and that stops the payments. Because um, they, they know they'll get the payments off that. Maybe cut it in half, they ain't going to get it. And a lot of the time, they wouldn't be entitled to it if it was on a debit card. That's why they, they don't put it on a debit. They want it on a credit because they, they can force the payments. Um, but this is why I like things on a debit card or not at all. Anything that's on a contract, like telephones, etc. Telephones, electric, water are all on direct debits, but I monitor them because sometimes I'll put them on estimations. So it's like the electric bill that they started this year, it was um, nearly three times as much as it should have been. And as soon as you query with it, they said, oh, yeah, we messed up the previous three bills. Um, which was fine because I could actually see that because they were low and I did question when they come in they were low um, but they had underestimated and then they took it all in one chunk because they'd actually sent somebody to actually have a look um, that's fine don't mind doing that but that's keeping control of your money because a lot of people want control of your money they don't worry about it same with car insurance renewals when they automatically put it through you don't have to worry about it if you don't do anything we will automatically renew no you bloody well won't I'll make that decision because I'll shop around because I'll get a better deal because you normally do get a better deal rather than renewing with your regular company same with the telcos here with Telefonica um, Movistar it's 50 I think it's 56 euros a month if you're an existing customer. If you start new again on a new contract, it's only 32. So the canceling the line and then reactivating and ask for a new one would actually work out cheaper than just keeping your phone line going. There's an example or moving provided, whatever. But the point being is there is opportunities around you that actually save you money. In that case, it's nearly 50% on your, your cost of your telephone bill every month. It doesn't sound a lot, does it? But if you, you call that, say, £300 a year, that's £300 a year that's taken out of your pocket for absolutely nothing. You're giving it to them because they are providing exactly the same service for twice as much as you need to be paying. Because um, the funny thing is, it's their contract length. The contract length is like 12 months or 18 months, and it's fixed at that 30 odd, and then when it goes up afterwards. So the whole point is, once it gets to that point, cancel it. Just say, no, I'm not interested. Um, and then they'll reinstall it again. I mean, why, why wouldn't they reinstall it? You start a new contract. Your contract's already expired, so you cancel the contract and say, okay, I'm no longer a customer. Can you now reinstall it again? Um, yeah. <laughs> There's lots of reasons for shopping around on these things, and a lot of it is taking control of the finances yourself. Because there's so many people out here that will rip you off. Um, it's, it's pretty much through governments to companies to individuals. Everybody wants in your pocket. Everybody wants a share. I mean, it's like the UK with NHS. I've got private healthcare. I still have to pay for that NHS system. Um, now, I know a lot of people go, yeah, it's a free system for the people and all this sort of stuff. You know what? If I've got private care, I shouldn't have to pay into it because I've already got my own insurance. Um, because, I mean, at the end of the day, it's an overburdened monster. It's, it's, it's not efficient at all. There's a lot of problems going to come up in that over the next few years. And I can't really talk about what I've had discussions with individuals about within businesses. Um, but there's a major disaster due just because of the stuff I'm aware of that I can't really expand on now. Um, back on track though, um, finances, getting ahead in life is about keeping financial control, expanding on making money instead of spending it, developing a system where you're reducing your spending, increasing your investments, etc. That, that gets you ahead. And I know some people will go, well, I don't know how to get ahead. Um, I was with Gordon yesterday, and Gordon invested in something, um, put $350 in, he's got $9 back today. That's already, that's in a day. The banks wouldn't even give you that in a year. 
Um, there is ways around that. You, the thing is, you need to talk to people you can trust that know what they're doing and develop um, a strategy around making money. Also identifying risks, etc. Um, but one of the key elements is reducing other people trying to spend your money for you. Um, you need more control over it. Interest is one of those things you're either making it or spending it. You're giving it to somebody. And I'm trying to get away from giving any to anybody and paying everything off my interest that I'm making off other people. Um, takes time, takes a bit of investment, takes a bit of research, but the opportunities are certainly there. Thanks for watching.